Okay, in the previous tutorials, we looked at shape keys and we looked at the action editor to be able to create animated shapes that we could then bring into the game engine. And the reason for doing that is this type of animation requires that you actually change the shape of the object for animation, but then when you move it, you move it differently in the game engine than you do within Blender Render. So within Blender Render here, if I wanted to move this object, I would set a keyframe, say I press I, give it a location, I'll go get my timeline, come up here to this locate this position, press I again, give it a location, then when I come back here to the beginning and press Alt A, it runs along there. And if this had an animated shape, it would be animating the shape and running along there. Well we can't do this kind of keyframe animation with the motion within the game engine, we have to use the actuators to be able to move it along in there. But we create the shapes in the same way within Blender Render. Okay, so let me control Z those out of there because I don't need that like this. But so what I will do is I'm going to just show you one quick review of the um, shape key editor just briefly. So I'll go grab a shape here. I got to thinking about this. this is something that really threw me from the beginning. So there's my basic shape. I'm going to go to key one, go to edit mode. In fact, actually, instead of just changing the whole shape, you can actually just change part of the shape. Maybe I'll grab these two vertices like this, and my shape modification will be this, and maybe this as well. Maybe I'll just move it like this. All right, and then I'll leave edit mode. And you can verify it down here like we did before, and there's our shape modification here. And then maybe on key two, we'll do the same thing, except maybe I'll grab this one and this one and that one and that one. To do it symmetrically, I could just scale it on X. I could say SX and scale it like that and leave that. So now on key two, there's that one. And here's key one. Is that one like this. All right, so now I'm going to get the shape key editor again. So remember the dope sheet. Grab the dope sheet over here, grab the shape key editor. Now, this is the point I wanted to make about this, that this caused me trouble as in the past when I first started learning this stuff was that, remember before when we changed these shapes in here, it automatically put an orange dot. Actually, if you change the keyframe, it's gonna put an orange dot up here anyway, just to know you've got something changing. But when it puts it adjacent to it, then you know key one will have a keyframe or key two will have a keyframe. So the second I change this, it's going to actually add a keyframe. But sometimes I want to review what I've done. So as long if I go over here to key one, so it doesn't set a keyframe, I can just verify this. I can say, oh, okay, I want it to look like this at this location at 0.469. But notice there's no keyframe set. Right? So but I know that's maybe the position I wanted to be because I'm using it over here. So then when I come over here I can just kind of move that up and back and maybe I'll just type in 0.469. It changes it yellow and it set the shape here. So then maybe move up to frame 50 and it's the same thing. I don't know what shape I want it to be for a key one yet. So I can just come over here and I'll change it. Notice it doesn't change it hasn't changed it yellow for this particular keyframe. And maybe I wanted it point one three one so then in the same way over here I can just actually sometimes you just click in but I'll just type it in point three one and so then that's set and that's set I'll use the down arrow key to go back to it point four six nine up arrow key to change different keyframes just like you would do with regular keyframes up and down arrow key and then when I run it alt a there's the shape change like that alright because when I first learned it I was just moving them in here and that it would throw me off so you kind of verify it verify it in advance okay so now and then we'll just do one last verification of this in the game engine but we'll add the motion to it as well so I'll go I'll just be in game engine mode and go to the logic bricks and well let's see what was the name of that shape let's go back to the default mode here let's see default mode says uh, key action is the name like this okay so we'll go back into the game engine into the into the game logic and I'm going to set my sensors let me see here's a keyboard sensor I'll actually use just one keyboard sensor I'll click there I'll press the A key and then over here I'm going to add my action actuator 
and I'm going to add a motion action waiter as well. And I'm going to control them both at the same time. So that'll go there, and it'll also go there. All right, so I want two things to actually happen at the same time. So the action, I'll go pick it up. It's called key action like that. I'll start from frame one. Maybe I'll go to frame 50. And I'm going to come over here and press the pulse button so it just, if I hold down the key, it'll just run over and over again. And then also, notice the orientation of my axis. There's the red is X and positive X is the direction which the arrow points. So on the positive X axis for the location, every time I press the key, I'm going to say move it a distance of 0 0.01, not very far. All right, so what will be happening is that as we press it here, you'll see that it will, the A key should make the animation occur and it should make the motion occur, which will result in essentially everything occurring at the same time, the motion and the animation. So I'll start the game engine and I'll, oops, hang on, let me get rid of that physics visualization again. Okay, and then I'll run it and I'll press A and there it is. It's changing the shape, the one shape, and moving along at the same time. So that's the fundamental way that we're going to work with building these basic characters for starters. In later lessons, we'll work with uh, more advanced ways for doing this. But for now, this is a great way to start, and it forms the basis of doing animation that we are able to do within the game engine. Okay, we'll practice that for a while, get used to it. it you'll be comfortable with it in no time. And then, uh, in fact, you probably want to jump ahead of me, but you know, there's, but there's a lot more to learn. Okay, I'll see you in the next lesson.